Could I say that? Go on, Annabelle. Uh, so could you tell us um, what you were representing um, from a social isolation and belonging point of view? Um, we discussed aging in our group. Um, uh, we looked in problems. And uh, the problems uh, are listed as ill health, physical and mental, dementia, uh, being lonely, uh, losing partner friends, retirement, uh, and losing your purpose. Lack of resources, because you are aged, you cannot drive, and there isn't any transport. And lack of hope, lack of information, lack of new technology. So that's a long list. And, uh, but there are good organizations, U3A, uh, mm -hmm. University of Third Age, Living in Harmony, Men's Matters, Slough Seniors, 50 plus, 60 plus, church groups, recycled teenagers. If you missed anything, please feed back to us. What we came to is that, how do we get these groups working together? Bridging the gap, voluntary sector, local authorities, faith groups, and what is the individual's role in that? But there are a few problems in here. We thought of Slav being Slav, so diverse language is a problem. Not all the groups speak the same language, so they cannot come together. Um, Maidenhead uh, MCF uh, representative said getting Muslim women out is a bit of a problem, but I don't see Slav as a problem in that because there are Muslim women groups. Uh, transport in the evening is a problem. It's not very safe. Uh, also, where to turn to? If you have a problem, who to go to? And how to convey the message, working both ways. If you are from these, or an individual, where to go? And how, how you change, uh, uh, convey your message? Uh, Mr. Gupta said, how faith can be solely responsible. Why, why are we saying how faith can help isolation? Isolation is a universal problem. Why faith is isolated from the whole thing? We should all work together. And uh, I'm talking more than three sentences. <laughs> so what do we do as individuals? Don't expect everything from the authorities the council, voluntary sector, you are an individual, take responsibility. Still, when you take responsibility, start an action, you need a strong leader, at least one. But when that person, since we are talking about aging, when that person is aging, who is going to take over? So you need to nurture younger people. Sam, are you there? And cross-generational work. What if there aren't any young volunteers to take over from you? In that case, work with the organization who work with the young people. So like EXA and an older group working together. Individually, go extra mile. It doesn't hurt to say hello or good morning to someone, to smile to someone. Be friendly, be compassionate, take the first step. Yes, Sam, go out every morning, but not everyone can say hello to you. You got to be prepared to say hello yourself. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Three sentences on social media. One, the question how might digitalization and social media lead to social isolation or loneliness, clearly written by a non-digital native, because we saw more positive possibilities than uh, negative possibilities. However, digital only policies can exclude particularly older people and or poorer people, and therefore we need both and. And three, in terms of our individual response, we said, can we please be kind on social media, be honest, and challenge aggressive behaviour in a de-escalating way? Okay, so we um, took two topics for <coughs> twice as long to speak. Um, <laughs> um, so we looked at addiction and homelessness, and when we looked at the problems, they were quite varied. So there's an element of you distancing yourself from rugby 
Um, so you distancing yourself from other people, but also other people distancing themselves from you. So it's a two-way thing. Um, you find you can't talk to people around you. Um, you move from positive people to negative people. We talked about young people becoming quite isolated. There could be issues of county lines, gangs. We talked about human trafficking, modern slavery, we went on. So that was, that was a very varied discussion. Um, the next section where we talked about who was already working with this issue in Slough, we've got a variety of different groups doing some great things. So we've got AA, we've got the Samaritans, we've got Turning Point, we've got Slough Outreach, mainly around this table, which is all really great. Um, but there was also Shock, Shelter, um, Slough Run, so there's a few organisations there. And then when we talked about what else needs to be done, so we talked about resilience, compassion, um, our language towards other people. We talked about um, prevention work in schools and early intervention, because actually are we instilling that culture? Um, identifying vulnerable people and intervening early. Um, we also talked about language barriers, like yourselves, that apparently there are up to 100 different languages in this area, so that's a challenge for everyone. Um, we also talked about, quite importantly, I think, coordinating care between groups. There are lots of people doing lots of things, but we're not all speaking to each other and linking in with each other, so how can we do that better? And then on the last point, what can we do to help so we can all live together better, which is, I guess, the purpose of something like this conference. Um, we talked about spirituality and well-being, holistic well-being, talking also about a really simple thing, which was um, listening. We can all listen more and be a bit more compassionate. Um, creating some non-judgmental spaces for people to speak. Um, we talked about how can children have safe spaces in schools where they can you know, sort of talk to an adult about what might be going on with them. Um, youth centres, community centres. Okay. That was a long one. <laughs> Our topic was uh, mental health. Um, so there are some things that don't help people with mental health issues. Um, fear is the first and foremost one. Once we understand fear, um, we can address a lot of these issues. Uh, but also how we value people. If it's the contribution that people can uh, make to commercial uh, activities, to our economy, that's no longer good enough. We also need to value people for uh, bringing joy to other people, bringing a smile. Um, and labeling, because people become a diagnosis, and then they get a label, and the label themselves, our use of language that's not particularly helpful. There are numerous organizations enabling uh, town slough, but also voluntary organizations that can help with mental health. And they need to be uh, communicated and signposted. And the people who do the prescribing there are uh, Ramesh's uh, team, but also doctor surgeries, um, and communication was mentioned before, so let's talk. Um, what can we do um, uh, and what, what needs to be done beyond that? Uh, there is communication, communication, but also um, uh, cooperating. Um, so this seems to be a, a theme that goes through it. We also need to uh, start educating people because um, we have our own uh, shortcomings when it comes to talking to people uh, in the term of how we perceive them. That needs to be educated out of us. We need to understand why we do certain things the way we do them so that we can stop doing them. And a very big thing is smile. Smile opens up um, uh, the soul. Smile makes us open to talking and um, smile for slow. <laughs> Thank you.